Hello, welcome to my candidacy review presentation. My name is Desmond Du, and let me introduce a little bit about myself. I'm from Singapore, and I previously did a BFA in motion media design back in 2019. And shortly after I graduated, I started working at Warner Media Studios in Atlanta, and I'm back here for my MFA degree uh, in SCAD Savannah. So some of my certification includes uh, being an Adobe Certified Expert. And here's a quick overview of my working experience. And the most recent one before graduate school was with Warner Media Studios, where I did broadcast motion graphics for brands and networks such as NBA, Turner Classic Movie, and Cartoon Network. As for how I position myself as a motion designer, I would say I specialize in animation, often using JavaScript expression coding and scripting to create custom animation setups or complex animation. On top of that, I usually find myself in leadership roles, such as being an animation lead or a project manager in group projects. Moving on, my purpose in coming back to grad school is because one day I like to teach in the US or back home in Singapore. Um, and also I want to combine and contextualize my broad discipline and interests such as animation, teaching or technical proficiency into one coherent uh, whole uh, into my creative practice or artistry. And I believe my past year of graduate school has helped me in this aspect, which I will demonstrate in my project showcase. And lastly, I want to focus on becoming a better critical thinker so as to offer something new to the world as opposed to following what's trendy on motionographer. The first project I'd like to showcase is a title sequence I've done for the first Matrix film. It's about 90 seconds long and I was, I was responsible for all aspects of this project and it was produced for the cinematography class when I was in SCAD Atlanta. I usually begin designing a title sequence by identifying a key quote from the movie that really resonates with me and that it summarizes the plot or the underlying theme. In this case, it's this quote by Morpheus about the illusionistic nature of reality that is the Matrix. My interpretation of that quote will lead into my treatment writing, which is, which is to create the sense of disconnect or departure from reality into the virtual world of Matrix uh, by using a blend of live action footage, CG, and animated elements. Subsequently, I start assembling visual references and mood boards based on the four main themes I identify. The first one, technology, skill reality, Neo Noir and Cinematic. So these mood boards allowed me to get into the story pro uh, storyboarding process. So here are some samples of my storyboard on how I do visual ideation and planning for animation. Uh, these storyboards are for me to quickly block out shots and write down uh, what, what happens uh, in each, uh, each scene uh, what I, and you know, what I intend for the animation as well. And from there, I design a series of style frames. And so here they are. And here's a compilation of the style frames. Then I move into production and I also took the opportunity to experiment with mediums that I'm not usually used to. One of which is, you know, using drone videography. So I contacted a friend who had a drone and we deploy it uh, from the SCAD Atlanta car park uh, to capture different shots of the skyline. Uh, and then the footage was then brought into After Effects for color grading and, uh, and animation to kind of also match the look uh, from the Matrix film. Um, I was also curious about uh, 3D animation. I want to experiment with it and see how I can implement it into a tile sequence. So I downloaded a 3D model of Agent Smith online and rigged it and animated with the Adobe app Mixamo. And I also created a binary code rain animation in After Effects, which I used to texture the model and to create uh, an army of Agent Smith in code form marching in one shot of the tile sequence. And for the last part of this process, I want to bring attention to the credit text animation, uh, which is one of my favorite part when designing a tile sequence. What I usually do uh, is to create several motion tests or sketches of how you look and select one to be implemented for the rest of the credit, just like the one you see here. So there's a motion sketch that is later on implemented onto uh, the rest of the credits so as to achieve consistency and also not to regard the credits as an afterthought. So you can watch this title sequence animation uh, in the file path listed here. For the second project I want to cover is this uh, project called uh, For Domestica. So not too long ago, I was approached by the company Domestica to produce a video course. Uh, and in this course, I teach people how to make uh, a title sequence animation that you see here based on the book Subprime Attention Crisis. Uh, so the concept, uh, it, the book is about covering uh, how big tech financialize attention and making it into a commodity for digital advertising. 
so I wanted to visualize how technology process or quantify our actions and behaviors into code and algorithm. So this is represented through the theme of algorithmic, algorithmic generative design and the digital world of code. Uh, so I created a mood board based on those themes and here they are. Next, we move into the animation production. And in this segment, I want to showcase three procedure techniques I developed to help me design and animate at the same time. The first component is this orb, which I call the shell core, which is made entirely in After Effects. My arrival at this design began with starting with a simple shape like this. And I would write an expression into the position property to arrange duplicates of the base shape in a conical spiral fashion like this. So from here, right, once I got a good base foundation, I would stylize with distortion effects and color, correct, uh, color correction to achieve the final look you see in the image uh, at, at the first. And the second one uh, is the data tunnel. It's in, it, go, it has the same process of having a base texture, in this case, this fractal noise, and using uh, an expression that I wrote, I was able to kind of stack and duplicate this texture in Z space uh, to create this digital block environment quickly. Um, and for the final uh, technique, procedure technique I developed uh, is this symbol tech line, which is uh, using conditional logic uh, uh, expression, to, which is written onto a shape path in After Effects, right? So uh, this will generate the lines and I will animate it on with the trim paths and then I'll mirror it to make it symmetrical and visually appealing. So the beauty of this technique is that, of this process is that it allows me to generate variance just by changing the seed value with a slider control. So here are the samples of those variants. And to watch this uh, title sequence animation, you can find the file as listed here. For my third project, I want to cover this uh, fictional project to create the splash screen for the Cinema 4D R24. Um, so this was done for my visual effects class on Python programming for Maya. And uh, it's actually inspired by the past designs of uh, Velvet Spec uh, past design, past uh, splash screen design uh, done by Velvet Spectrum and Tentrio. So the idea is to combine their visual language of a mandala and organic form achieved through proceduralism and repetition. So the process goes like this. Uh, it begins with writing a Python script to create custom tools and procedures to be used in uh, Autodesk Maya. The outcome of the code I written was a Maya user interface call, uh, which I call the Mandala Generator. Uh, this allows user to replicate a selected object and arrange them in the ring. So here's a breakdown of the UI. The user can control the number of duplicates, the radius of the ring, how much of the ring to duplicate around, and so on. To demonstrate this better, I have some images to show. So over here, you can see that uh, this GIF uh, shows that you can, uh, with the, the object has been duplicated, uh, you can specify the number of duplicates and also like how uh, the radius of the ring. And then subsequently, uh, you can also you know, uh, duplicate it around, uh, not just a portion of the ring, so say 50% uh, or maybe uh, a quarter of the ring, right? And then the last uh, feature uh, that I want to showcase is that you can also create uh, interesting design by alternating the size of the duplicates, right, for every end object, just like that. Uh, so just to create some visual interest or appeal, uh, or make things less uh, uniform. And so with that script, you, uh, script built, uh, I was able to get into production by modeling a single paddle in Cinema 4D, which I was more comfortable with than in Maya, and I exported it to Maya to model the final 3D flower. It's textured with Pixar Render Man and render uh, with uh, different camera angles. Uh, so using the camera sequences uh, sequencer in Maya, I was able to um, animate different camera shots uh, to bring and also animate components of the flower to bring everything to life. So here are the style frames I designed. And here's the final outcome. So to watch the animation, you can find the file as listed in the path I've shown here. For my fourth project, the last two projects I want to cover is the commotion events. Uh, for the commo for last year's commotion event, I was the lead animator and I oversaw the production of the title sequence animation uh, through a virtual setting. Uh, my main responsibility also includes creating the animation toolkits or preset for the graphic design team to animate social media deliverables. 
So my involvement in the title sequence include helping people with uh, their shots, uh, and I was primarily responsible for six out of the 20 shots in the title sequence. The second part of my role, which I will focus on talking about, is how I develop animation toolkits and set up for other teams to deploy for animating deliverables uh, without my involvement. Uh, so one of which was to produce animation for the Scat Commotion Instagram uh, to announce the countdown of the event. So in this process, I will share three toolkits that I developed to design and animate the blobs, the waves, and the plants, which were common motifs in the title sequence style frame. So for uh, the 2021 title sequence, the challenge was having many illustrative and organic elements such as uh, this blob over here. And in order to have consistency among all deliverables and not have uh, each individual animator create the blob in their own way, uh, I made a toolkit uh, within After Effects that allows them to quickly customize the design of, say, this blob element. So this was done uh, using the Essential Graphic feature in After Effects, which allows me to package custom control I want in the composition. So when users open up this file, they can change the properties such as color, size, motion, speed, and even lighting. Um, for the second toolkit, uh, we, needed, we needed to create wavy tapered stroke. Uh, what I did was to create an expression using sine wave function to create a stroke path and draw it with the effect thick stroke that allows better tapering and coloring of the shape path. Uh, so this gave animators more control on the design and motion uh, and not while not creating aliasing issue that was uh, very common with using the wave warp effect. And here is one part of the tire sequence where the wave rig was implemented by my teammate, uh, teammate Greg Markman. And the last two kit, uh, two kit is the growing plants. Originally, the plan was to have my teammate Dai Kim, our strongest 2D animator, to do the hand-drawn animation for the plants as shown here. However, with a limited availability and a time-consuming nature of cell animation, she, uh, you know, she took about two weeks to create this set of animation. Uh, which was concerning for me because we had to create more variation, not just for the title sequence, but as well as the title cards and the social media deliverables. So I got down to engineering another toolkit to automate this process. So I wrote an algorithm that basically generate alternating shape path to create the veins of the plan. And then in After Effects, I was able to stylize uh, the form to dice drawings, uh, cell animation using distortion effects. Then. I package it up with essential graphics and you know created the necessary controls that the animators would need, such as color, height, and then as well as uh, you know keyframing the animations uh, of the growth. And it was also necessary to demonstrate to the team uh, what the toolkit does. Hence, I would create samples of uh, and and variation to show the potential of like what uh, the animator can do uh, with this with my setup. So here are some motion tests just to give the team a proof of concept. Putting all together, these two kits are implemented in the animation for the social media posts. And here are all the animations. And you can find a file in the folder as listed here, along with the title sequence as well. For the final project, I want to cover Commotion 2022. Uh, for this year, I am the lead animator again, and my, main, my involvement includes animating the Logan animation and also operationalizing the production of Commotion through building custom setups and workflow, and as well as through project management. Uh, to start off with, I'll cover the logo animation. So this year's logo animation is a little bit tricky because of the stylized isometric uh, 3D forms, which also included some uh, optical illusion. So it's not entirely physically accurate, such as you can see the counter of the O being a see-through of the entire block. So compared to the past three years of like uh, local animation, it was all 2D. And so for this year, we were kind of stumped because we weren't entirely sure uh, what we should do, whether we should animate using Cinema 4D or, you know, or pre uh, make a clever setup in After Effects. So after much experimenting uh, on my own, I discovered that the solution was a combination of both tools. I first animated the 3D form, the 3, did a 3D animation within Cinema 4D, and I texture each face of the block assigned with a flat primary color. The idea is to texture, to overlay the textures on each face of the block and After Effects by setting the map to the individual RGB channel. So we animated a series of textures, and we also kept it simple to keep it visually interesting, but not too distracting. 
And so each block was then rendered out separately. And it, like I said, the texture was placed onto different planes using the color channel. And I would uh, cycle through several texture before resolving to the final logo design. So here is the logo animation. For the second part of this process, I want to cover how I managed this year's production uh, by using my knowledge and experience from the past tree commotion uh, event that I have done. Uh, commotion was yet another virtual collaboration this year, and as there was a lot of exchanges over Slack and Zoom, I employed the use of Notion, a digital workspace for notes, tasks, and database to curate hyperlinks, meeting notes, uh, as well as deliverable uh, specification animation guidelines and how to uh, think basically things to keep in mind. So basically my team can refer to it so as to mi minimize any miscommunication when we are you know, uh, in giving out instructions or feedback. And this Notion database, right, also include like meeting agenda and production schedule, which are planned by me. And collaborating virtually means that there was a lot of work file passing around. And so uh, I also had to enforce a naming convention on my team so that our cloud drive and files remain organized and we can easily identify the creator of different assets. So here's the naming convention guidelines we used this year as well as last year as well. Um, and in order to efficiently animate the abundance, the abundance of graphic elements such as the geometric shapes and the animated textures, um, I also developed pipeline to keep my teammates informed and foresee what is coming next and what is expected. Uh, so prior to assigning any animation work, I would do vision analysis of the style frame and categorize the elements into groups. Uh, in this case, it was a different texture type, different types of texture, uh, you know, present on the geometric shape. Uh, I would then assign each member to animate each set, each set of textures as opposed to telling uh, them to just animate the texture, right? Uh, so uh, being specific and organized is my way of being an animation lead. And after this uh, vision analysis, uh, we got into animation and make them into a toolkit and also render some of this texture out for, to, for use in title cards, for live, or live stream deliverables, or social media animation. Once the title cards was complete, we got down into uh, pre-production for the title sequence. So we will model and block out the camera shots and the 2D team will do uh, research and motion tests on how to uh, create the shot that they will assign. And over the weeks, uh, weeks of refinement uh, and feedback, they produce a shot that is ready for the rough cut assembly. And subsequently, we'll add the titles and as well as optimize the renders by using proxies to speed up preview. Uh, right now, the current title sequence is in its final phase, so I won't be showing the animation. Uh, for the last segment of this process, I will be covering how I give critique and feedback as an animation lead for uh, the student showcase title cards. So to be able to manage all 22 uh, student showcase title cards, which was animated by six animators, uh, this year I made use of Frame.io, uh, a video review and collaboration software to track the different versions, the approval status, as well as to give feedback. Rather than speaking over Zoom, I find it better to just provide a visual annotation that are timestamped so my team, uh, my animators can know exactly what to address as shown here. So I annotated with arrows and you can see the comments on the right hand side. Uh, so it's, uh, it's highly collaborative. And so uh, most of my comments are usually reminding animators to match the style frame design or changing the speed of certain elements to reduce visual distraction and adding secondary motion. And in order to keep the text animation for the title card consistent, I also prepare a text animation preset similar to what I did for Elastic Motion and have my team implement uh, one of the text animation sketch I created as shown here. So this deployment of animation preset also involved me doing a walkthrough with the team on how it works uh, so that the implementation can be a seamless one. So here are the final animation for the student showcase title cards, right? And the, the text animation preset is also implemented in the social media grid to announce the, the commotion event similar to like last year, right? You can f so you can find the files uh, at in, as listed in the file path here. And then uh, that concludes my project showcase and we can move on to my thesis. So for my thesis statement, um, it is infographics employ realism to persuade viewers of their factuality 
I'm interested, uh, the reason why I chose this topic is because I'm interested in the power of images and media and how it influence our action behaviors and how we think. So uh, a little bit about what my thesis, uh, well, it's about. Um, so I'm gonna read an abstract. Infographic animation in the form of explainer videos can influence viewers' actions, behavior, and their perception of reality through the selective representation of information and facts based on the creator's personal agenda or political intention. The believability of the message is dependent not only on the type of the visuals being shown, but as well as what is not being shown and who is the conveyor of the message and the authority in the subject. Realism through the use of indexicality of the image and common real-world phenomena blur the distinction between the subjective narrative from an infographic animation and the truth to materialize a worldview that appears to be objective and factual. So here are some uh, materials for my thesis preparation. We have the keywords and we have the, the authors that uh, I'll be reading up on. So Roland Barr and Ontology of Photography uh, Images, Baudrillard's Hyperreality, Edward Bernays' Propaganda, John Burgo, Ways of Seeing. So I have a bibliography which is available in the thesis material PDF. And then um, the artworks I'll be looking at, uh, well, the first one will be uh, animation, infographic animation by Nigel Holmes. Uh, produced for the the ten uh, the TED conference, uh, defining the definition of surplus and the debt. The other two pieces will be Stuxnet and an Anatomy of the Computer Virus by Patrick Clare, and you know Waiting for Superman, uh, by Jorge Canedo. And so you can find uh you know the materials in the PDF in the presentation folder as listed here. And to uh conclude uh, with my career and creative objective. In my remaining coursework, I want to focus on developing my own like personal creativity because I felt like I have been just working on uh, answering the brief uh, and not really kind of pursuing um, my own personal artistry. And I also want to kind of uh, stay longer in the U.S. And because of the uh, better economic opportunities. So I want to work in tech studio, uh, tech companies such as Google by, you know, uh, learning more about UX. And then finally, I do have plans in the future to run my own business and I want to be more informed about the finance uh, finance part so I'll be taking a business class so this concludes my uh, calendar review presentation thank you for listening